and welcome to this fourth episode in my little series on problem solving. In this episode, I'll be focusing on using the tools, so the different OLA and buffer tools and all the other things we've been talking about in this series um, in QGIS, but using it in the visual, so the model building tool, um, simply because when you work with more complex problems, it's um, often easier to redo your things if you have it as a model. So it, it's um, using the modeling tool is both a time saver if the problem is suitable for the pro for the for the modeling tool, but it's also a really good way of documenting it. So when you use a modeling tool. What will happen is you will get something that looks like this. So you will have a flow that you can demonstrate. Say, so, okay, so I took this layer and I buffered it and I intersected it and I unioned it and I clipped it and I so on. So you will be generating through your the way that you're using the tool. You will also be generating a documentation of your operation. So really, there's two big advantages. One, it's easier if you say, okay, now. Nah, you want to redo this with an R buffer size and you don't have to manually run through all the tools or you find out that, well, that data layer there, we can use another data layer for it. Then you just change the data layer and run the tool again. So it is a time saver, especially if it's something that is a wee bit complex and you might want to change some parameters or maybe just correct some errors you made. And it's also a really good tool for creating a reasonable documentation of what you're doing. So in the earlier episodes in this series, I talked about how we could convert this problem of where we could place a fictive power plant um, based on some descriptions as a text to something that is a combination of data layers and operations that we can implement in our GIS. So it's really this one here that I'll try to make a model of within QGIS. So in QGIS, I have um, collected different layers. So I have, um, collect I have this, um, my frame that say I, I want to work within. I have this natural earth admin, and that had some lakes in it. And really what I wanted was I didn't I didn't really need that one. So I want the one to use is this land. So land, let's get rid of lakes. So land is basically just admin difference my lakes, which is also what I talked about in the in the deconstruction element here. So I have land, I have lakes, I have coastline, I have railroads, and I have urban areas. Uh, I guess I put that one down so we can see it all. So um, that's the data I want to work with. And I wanted to solve, so I wanted to find this power plant that could be within say we said within 10 kilometers so when 10 kilometers of our lakes and coastlines within 500 meters of the railroads but not within 20 kilometers of these urban areas and it has to be on land so we can't build in the sea or in the lakes so that's the thing we want to construct. To use the modeling tool, you go to your processing in the toolbar. You have this graphical models. You can also, if you have the toolbar, as I have here, you can choose this over uh, here models and you can say create new model. So here we can start creating our model. So basically a model consists of two elements. We have some inputs and we have some algorithms. 
So algorithms are the tools that we have in our toolbox. And our input is data layers that we can say, okay, as this input, I want to use this data layer. So in our case, what we want to do is we start with some inputs and we go down to our vector la layer here. So all of these inputs are vector layers. So I want to have a vector layer and I will call it land. I want another one that I will call lake. And as a matter of fact, I can also specify the geometry type that does sometimes help. So that will be a polygon and it's mandatory. And I can do the same on this one. Right click edit, say that's also going to be a polygon. Then I needed the extra layer. So the railroad and the coastline and um, no reason for you to watch me do that. So for this making my modeling easier. I just arrange all my inputs along the top. Um, so I have, have these spread out at the top of my layer. So now I have all my inputs ready. I can now start concentrating on what I want to do with those inputs. And if we remember to our PowerPoint, we um, had a union of a 10 kilometer buffer on our water and our coastline. So let's start implementing that one. So we need a buffer. And um, just like this set of algorithms is the same set that we have over in QGIS. So we can um, approach them in the same way. So we, and we can also just type buffer. So we have a buffer tool, we drag it in and um, fill out what we want on our buffer tool. So in this case, we want to have an input layer. At this point, we want lakes and we want to do a distance. So it will be a bit annoying. Um, we could click the help and that will bring us up information about what it is here because and then uh, how is it, um, the buffer tool? And there's a help on the buffer tool. And it says distance and that is a number. And it is, um, so in this case, in the, in the um, modeling tool, we can't choose what they are in, but they are always in map units. So we wanted 10 kilometers, so 10. Did I get that right? 10,000, yep, yeah, 10,000 meters because map units are meters. This segment here, that is a question about how round. I personally always set it to 10. And then I would like to have these dissolved. Again, the, the solving will slow it down, but it just makes a nicer, uh, cleaner data set for most situations. Sometimes you, you do not want to dissolve and watch the videos on the buffer tool and when and why not to use the solve. If you want to have the output in QGIS so you can see what this buffer looks like, you, have, you can give it a name there and it will be added as a layer in uh, QGIS. I don't want that because that's just a bit confusing. And then I want to say this is my lake buffers. So this, and that's going to be really important naming. Naming your different tools because otherwise you'll get lost. So I take my lakes and I buffer them with 10 kilometers. And I'll just copy that because I've been needing that in a moment. So now I have my buffers on my lakes. I just want to do another buffer. This time I'll be doing it on my coastline. I'll call it coast buffer. I'll give it a distance of 10,000. 
I'll give it 10 segments and I will dissolve it. And I've got these two tools here. Um, and what did I want to do with these? I um, wanted to do a union of these two tools. So I wanted, because it can be either close to a lake or close to the coastline. So in that case, it, I can use a union. So think, put down the union tool. And this time it's a bit different. Let's call it um, coast, lake, buffer, union. So I know where I'm in the process. And then now I don't want to do input parameters. So you can see these over here. I can change them. At the moment they are model inputs, but I can change these to take data from a algorithm output. So that I want to do that in both case. I want to take my lake buffers and my coast buffers. Okay. So I had to use this little gear and change it from model input to algorithm output. So there's going to be the output from my previous algorithms or my previous tools going to be the input to this tool. And happy with that. So now I've got my post and my lake buffered union together. Next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to look at my railroads. So I needed a 500 meter buffer around my railroads and I wanted to intersect them with this one. Intersect because it was an and it had so it could my power plant could be close to coast or lake, but it had to be so an and close to my railroads in this 500 meter buffer. So again, buffer tool, drag it in, connect it to call it. Rail buffer and connect it to my railroads and give it 500 meters, 500 because it works in map units and the map unit of the projected data that I'm working in. So, in another video, I talked about how I have taken this natural earth data set and clipped it and projected it before I can start using these buffers. And that projection I chose this Lambert as a mutual equal area. It has meters as its unit, so therefore I know it's meters. I want to leave that as is. I set the segments up to get a bit more round in the corners. And I will set the diesel. Yes. And finally, I wanted to intersect the result from here with that one. And that's again relatively straightforward. So if I could spell, uh, intersect, uh, do, 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 uh, um, there, intersection. Again, I have to choose the, the multi layer, but in this case, I'll just be using the symbol one. So, um, combine that, pull it in, and say I want to use not input, so change this to algorithm output, change this to intersect, that's it, what should we call it? Uh, rail water intersect, so that's what I call it in the PowerPoint, and that's going to be. The input is going to be from the buffer of the railroads and the union of my buffered lakes and coastline. So, 
try to find somewhere where you don't have too many crossing lines you make short one down um so now we have our intersection part we um wanted to clip with land so um, I remember land was this difference I cheated I have already done the land calculation so I'll have it up in land so and again there I could have used a intersect again but just because I have used one intersect I will use a clip so I'll drag the clip tool in and call it uh Railroad water land clip, and one of the parameters is a input, so that's this one that's land, and the other one is a model output, so that will be my railroad water intersect. So, uh, intersection from algorithm railroad that one. So, now I've got my models this far. and got all of these on my land so basically i have now constructed all of this positive constraints so it had to be close to a lake it had to be or it could it had to be close to a lake or the coastline it had to be close to a railroad and it had to be on land so that's all of these positive constraints here my negative constraints was a 2000 a two kilometer, uh, a 20, sorry, 20 kilometer um, buffer around my urban areas. So I will create, bring in my buffer tool, drag that in, say that's going to be on a model input, so it will be on urban areas and it will be 20 thousand and it will be buffered with 10 on that and i want to do a dissolve on it and did i give it a suitable name nope so urban buffer and finally when you have in this case there's only one negative constraint so i don't have to Think about combining with ands and ors as I did with my positive constraints here. So now I have my all of my positive constraints, that's this part here, and my negative constraint, that's really just this one. I will just do a difference on my positive and my negative constraints. Because it's important that you get and you're doing a difference get it the right way around. So there it's important to know what is being differenced from what. The difference, again there, there's a multiple one, but I'll just use a simple one here. And what I want to do a difference on is my urban, so it's my uh, real water, land with my urban the difference of those and i'll be doing it on my in this case it's going to be a model algorithm output of my buffers from my urban areas and a algorithm output from my clip on my land order railroad you can see one of the neat things of using this model builder tool is first of all you get some graphical idea of how is the flow of this so we have all our positive and then we'll do a a difference on the positive and the negative and if I get this wrong, so it does say that this um, this is my 
overlay and my input. And again, there I can bring up the help and see what is overlay and what is input. If I get any of these things wrong and the model does not render the result I want, I can go back and change it, which is nice. Um, so I can always, if I want to change a parameter, so if I decide that I want a different buffer size here, I can double click the tool and then change the parameters in here. So it's really nice, you know, especially if you are fiddling with getting all of these parameters right to use this, um, this modeling tool here. So I'm happy. I just have to save it. I can save it in two ways. I can save it into my project or I can save it to a file. Um, advantage of saving it to a file is then you have that file lying around. Um, a wee bit annoying is that when you when you choose a file, it will think of it as, it's, okay, you want to do it as a file, so you want it to be available outside your project. So we will place it in a common folder and it places it under your um, profiles. And you have to be really, really careful of that because sometimes you get this locks up and it's difficult to work with and you clear your, your profile and then you'll clear all your models in it. So be really careful about this. Um, so save your model somewhere where you know they don't get deleted by accident. Um, in this case, I will, even though I said that I'm saving it as a file, I would save it in my project folder. Um, so my, my, in my demo part here, in my jazz project, in my taping project, and I'll just call it, and obviously I've practiced already, so I'll just call it model location two, and save it. But I could also just press the model, and now it's saved directly inside the project folder. Remember that in QGIS, a project folder contains information about which layers to load or which data to load and how to visualize it. But also, if you have saved models, they are also saved in there. So you can save them in different places. You can export your models as pictures, PDFs, or SVGs, so graphic vector graphics. And you can also, if you watched my other video on automizing using Python, you can press the Python and that would generate this model, what this model does as a Python script. So if you are working with learning Python anyway, you can um, work with this and, sorry, the discard, um, and get some idea of how you can use Python programming. So lots of possibilities for saving both as graphics or as Python, or just saving the model in your, as a file or in your project. We are happy and uh, we press run. So what happens now is that this appears just like all the other tools in QGIS. So we just have our own little model two here, and we have to say, what is our coastline? That it, get, it guessed that was coastline. My lakes, are lakes, my land is my land data set, there's land that's there, and my railroads are railroads. And if I want my output to be temporary, and I will just do that to see if it all works, or if I want to save it, so I can press the click, then I can save it to a file. I just leave it as a temporary and one this data set. Okay, wrong on missing parameters. Urban area. Oh, I didn't fill the urban area in. Good. Ah. Um, oh, no output. That's what confused me there. So, see, there's something. There's no, where's the output of this? That's because this one is my final step. So, I have to go in here and give it a name. So, power, but 
Caucasians. So given that, I'll just resave it, project. So, because if you want an output, and I guess I want to see this result here, then you have to name it. You could, if any of these steps, if you want to see it in QGIS, you can just double click the tool and go here, press this buffer, and then enter a name, and then that la and the layer with that name will be generated. I just want the final one. So hopefully now this time, it will say lakes are lakes, coastlines are coastlines, land is land, railroads are railroads, urban areas are urban areas, and my output will just be a temporary file, or I could save it to a geo package. And I want to see the output. So run this. And it goes through all the steps of my model. And it's finished. And um, I can close it. And in QGIS, if I now look at my PowerPoint, okay, this looks wrong. I mean, it should be along these lines, but not inside these. So there's something that's not quite right here. Um, so my area looks like it has, this railroads have been created the wrong way around. Um, so that they have been cut out of the layers and not and together. So I'll have to go back to my model and see, hmm, where was the mistake? And luckily, it is just a model, so I don't have to run all of these tools again. So back to the model. So in my um, in my model, well, if I look at what it looks like in um, QGIS, it looks like there's gone something wrong with this urban buffer and my railroad water thing. So I probably put those two parameters wrong. So it's probably in this tool here. And um, if I go in here, I see it does say that I want to take my input layer as my buffer and then do a difference with my railroad. So that will give me those parts of the buffer that are not railroad, which is not what I want. So I had made these the wrong way around. So I'll change this to being my railroad land clip and this to be my urban and i guess okay this was the last tool so maybe it would have been okay even if i didn't manually to go back and change that last tool because it's worse if it's one of the first tools you make a mistake in but just to show you that you can easily go back save your model and run it again this time it does remember how all the parameters were set, so I don't have to go back through them all. And I can just say run. And the question is if the result will be the right one. So close it and go on QGIS. And this time, if I turn this one off, it's for the one from before. You can see that now we have these areas, these green areas, which are my possible power stage uh, plant locations so they're along railroads they're close to water and um, my coastline and they are far away from my urban areas let's see where my urban areas are so they are not close to my urban areas. so it looks like this model worked uh, and i'm happy with it i can save it and i guess that's basically it for this video i have um i have taken you from this original so this was what i created in the previous episode in this video series where i deconstructed and specified this one where we had our text to something that is something that can be implemented so i have all these layers and operations on it and then I went into QGIS and used the model builder to create this model um, where I have all the steps and that will then finally 
uh, result in my output here. And I guess I could save it as a permanent data set now. That is fine. And that's basically all I wanted to say for this video. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope that um, you learned something about how to combine all of the tools from the Kugis. You could have done it all manually by going in and using these vector overlay um, operations here, doing all the clipping and overlaying and intersection step by step. But it is just so much easier and so much uh, better because you have the documentation and you can turn back to it. So highly recommend if you have this type of situation where you have relatively simple but a lot of different layers you have to clip and intersect and so on, then that is where that model building tool is really, really useful. So. Hope you like this video series. Hope to see you in another set of videos. Bye.